Alright, so welcome to 2.2. We're going to talk about subsets in a slightly shorter video. We want to talk about the objectives here. We want to recognize subsets and use the, use the notation for subset. You'll notice the little equal to bar down here. So this means that A can actually be equal to B. We want to recognize proper subsets and use the notation C, uh, sub, proper subset here, and you'll notice it has the lack of the bar, so here A cannot be equal to B. We want to determine the number of subsets of a set, so this is all about organization. Okay, so how do we want to organize this? And then apply the concept of subsets and equivalent sets to infinite sets. And here we're just going to have a short discussion about Gregor Cantor. All right, who uh, really helped us out in this area. Okay, so subsets. Got to start off with a definition. Definition of a subset of a set is that A is a subset of set B expressed as A is a subset of B if every element in set A is also a cell an element in set B. So the nice example here is maybe we're going to have set A is um, Orlando Magic players and then set B is going to be NBA players okay so if you have Orlando Magic players all Orlando Magic players are on the NBA in the NBA so these are also NBA players and so A is going to be a subset of B the notation A is not a subset of B and that's how you read that symbol right there is not a subset of B that's how it gets read um, if there is at least one okay and all it takes is one element of set A that is not a cell is not an element of set B okay so if A is my children okay and B is all girls, all right, then here for this example, because I have one son, A is not going to be a subset of B because I have a son. So I have at least one element in my children that does not belong to all girls, all right, and, and we, would, we would argue vigorously for that. Uh, and so that's going to be a not equal to, all right. Every set is a subset of itself, right? So all my children is a subset of all my children. See what I did there? Okay. And then, of course, all girls is going to be a subset of all girls. And that's because of the equal sign sort of bar here at the bottom this this allows this to be true okay so here's our example using the symbols we want to plug these in so let, if we look one does show up in B the element three does show up in B the element five does show up in five and the element seven does show up in seven so this is a subset and it's actually a true subset, right? Because we have two additional elements in B that are not in A. So this is a true subset or a proper subset is what we're going to find out. Okay. Now, I don't know why this is messed up, but I'm going to make that a B. Okay. So A is the set X such that X is a letter in the word proof. And B is a set Y such that Y is a letter in the word roof. Well, here the P isn't anywhere in roof and so a is not going to be a subset of b all right and that makes us very sad what would make us very happy okay is to see that r shows up in both o shows up in both and f shows up as an element of both so it actually turns out that b is a subset of a and that makes us happy Okay, so this leads us to a discussion of proper subsets. All right, 
So what's a proper subset? A set A is a proper subset of set B, expressed as C A is a subset of B, if set A is a subset of set B and the sets A and B are not equal. So you'll notice the big difference here with the proper subset symbol is the lack of the sort of equal to bar, okay? And so because it's not there, we're going to strictly say that they cannot be equal to one another, all right? <clears throat> and this is going to be our definition of a proper subset. So um, while B is a proper subset, uh, is a subset of B, right? Because those guys are equal to each other. That's okay, all right? And while A could be a proper subset of B, Orlando Magic players versus NBA Magic players, and that's okay. And A could be a proper subset of B. This is okay because Orlando Magic players are a subset of NBA players. What is not okay is that NBA players are a proper subset of NBA players. This is not okay. You can't do this. All right. So NBA players is a subset of NBA players. Orlando Magic players are a subset of Orlando Magic players, NBA players. Orlando Magic players are actually a proper subset of NBA players. But NBA players is not a proper subset of NBA players because these two guys are equal. They're equal, and that's not okay in this particular circumstance. All right, so let's make sure that we understand this. I want to talk about proper subsets. Sorry, I had my uh, erase mark. We're going to talk about proper subsets, and we're going to write either subset in the blank, proper subset in the blank, or we're going to write both in the blank. Okay? Now let's think about this. Right? A is a set such that X is a person and X lives in San Francisco. B is a set X such that X is a person and X lives in California. If you think about it, right, um, San Francisco is a small part of California. And if you live in San Francisco, you live in California. But there are also people who live in Sacramento and other places, San Diego. And so A is going to be smaller than B, so that's a proper subset of B, okay? But also, A is a subset of B, because it's also smaller, all right? But so we can throw in the equivalence, and that's going to be okay. So both of these answers are okay. And do you see why? A is smaller than B, right? And so it is a subset of B, and they're not equal, so the equal to is okay here, and the not equal is okay here. Now what about this one? A is the set 2, 4, 6, 8. B is the set 2, 8, 4, 6. Well, there's the 2. It shows up in both. There's the 4. shows up in both. There's the 6. That shows up in both. There's the 8. That shows up in both. Well, this really means that A is equal to B. They're exactly the same set. They're just in a different order. So this means that A is a subset of B, but it is not a proper subset of B, okay? Because they're equal. And remember, the proper subset cannot have the equivalence there, all right? So if you understood that, that makes us happy. And you can move on to the next slide, all right? Subsets and the empty set. The empty set as a subset, all right? So here's our zero again. For any set B, for any set that has an element in it, okay, the empty set is a subset of B. And because of the equivalence, B could actually be the empty set, right? Because the empty set is going to be a subset of the empty set. That's okay because of the equivalence there. So this is going to be hold true for all sets B. For any set B other than the empty set, the empty set is going to be a proper subset of B. 
And this is why we have to exclude the empty set because we're excluding the equivalence here. All right, and so this gives us our zero, and we always want to remember that the empty set is part of every subset. Now, this was one of our objectives. One of our objectives was to determine the number of subsets of a given set. It turns out this really helps us out in probability. Okay, so what set is this? This is the empty set. The number of elements it has is zero by definition. And so the list of all subsets, well, it's just the empty set. If it's got nothing in it, it's still got nothing in it. And so the number of subsets is one, okay? But what about if you have A, okay? One element, you have one element in A. Well, there's actually two ways of writing it. The one element and then the empty set, no elements, right? So that gives you two subsets. What if you have two elements? How many different ways can you do that? If you have two elements, you could do A and B, A, B, or nothing. Now I'm grown quite a bit, right? Now I'm up to four. Okay. And then A, B, and C gives you three elements. And now if you have all three elements, first two, first and last, last two, and then you have first one, middle one, last one, and then you have the empty set, you end up with eight. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, two, four, eight. It seems like there's a pattern here. What is the pattern here? Well, two is like two to the first. Four is like two squared. Eight is like two cubed. And if I can remember back from intermediate algebra, two to the zero power is actually one. And if you look, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence now with the zero here represents the zero elements. The one here represents the one here. The two here represents the two here. And the three here represents the three here. So if I actually had four elements, right? A, B, C, and D. That would give me four elements. What would be the list of all the subsets? How many could I come up with? Well, it turns out that, that would be two to the fourth, and two to the fourth is going to give you 16, which I hope you predicted from the, the pattern here, right? So let's go ahead and, and generalize this. As we increase the number of elements in the set by one, the number of subsets doubles. And so the formula for this is with a set of n elements, you're going to end up with 2 to the n subsets. And because a proper subset excludes the equivalent set, we subtract 1 to remove the equivalent. Okay, so there's the little formula. All right, so don't forget this slide when we're going forward. And now let's do an example. All right, so finding the number of subsets and proper subsets. What is the number of subsets here? We have five, five elements, right? Okay, so if you have five elements, that means that you're going to have two to the fifth power. And that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. Okay, so that's the number of subsets. And then I have to do minus 1 for proper subsets, right? So this is subsets. And then that means that, oh, I lost my place here, 31 is going to be proper. subsets. One one smaller, right? We're just removing that equivalent set. Okay. Now what about this one? X is a natural number, is an element of the natural numbers, and 9 is less than or equal to X, is less than or equal to 15. Let's see. What do we have here? Roster method. Let's see what we got. 9. 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it looks like we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you have 2 to the 7th power, 128 for the number of subsets. So that means you're going to have 127 proper subsets. Okay, so those are the answers to those two examples. Now it's time to go on and talk about uh, Gregor Cantor. So um, Gregor Cantor uh, lived in the 1800s and died in 1918. And he studied the mathematics of affinity and assigned the transfinite cardinal number elf naught, that's how you pronounce that, elf naught, um, to the set of natural numbers. And he used one-to-one -one correspondences, right? So the one-to-one -one correspondences to establish some surprising equivalences between the set of natural numbers and its proper subsets. So he actually gave us the idea of um, infinity and countable infinity. And what he noticed was, is that with the natural numbers, because they grow without bound, you could actually set up a one-to-one -one correspondence with the even natural numbers. One would correspond to two, two would correspond to four, three would correspond to six, Every value had its double, and look right there. You're going to have uh, the n, and then you double it. But because n can grow without bound, and the natural numbers can grow without bound, you can actually set up a one-to-one a -one correspondence between the even natural numbers and the natural numbers. And that was weird. And people for a long time did not believe these results. They, they had to keep testing it and stuff, so that was interesting. Uh, the same thing, of course, happens with the natural odd numbers. And so uh, there's a nice article in your book that I recommend that you read that talks a little bit about this um, because I think you'll find it interesting in your thinking of infinity and infinite sets uh, as we go forward. All right. Thank you very much for watching, and you should go on to video 2.3 now.